Hello everyone this is part 3 of what if Naruto was trained by the nine-tailed fox, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Join my membership the perks are great, it's in the description. Naruto, to be put shortly, was laughing wildly. So wildly, in fact, he was beginning to tip out of his chair. QB, sitting on his jailer's lap, drew his ears back with a scowl. Come now, Kittling, it is not that amusing, stated QB boredly. Contrary to what he said though, his tail flicked back and forth in an amused manner. Godime, sitting at her desk with her fingers bridged beneath her chin, chuckled merrily. Yes yes, get over it Naruto. It's more ironic than funny, she agreed, trying to sound exasperated, yet failing as her grin ruined the effect. Naruto, having had his fun, gingerly wiped his watering eyes with a smile. To funny, so the council thinks Sasuke was under a mind control jutsu when he ran off to the missing nin. Soon it nodded and the vessel's foxish grin widened with a chuckle. But the council is still wary of him anyway, and asking me to ask Kakashi to keep watch on him just takes the cake. Even if they suspect him for the wrong reasons, it still works to our goal. Soon it chuckled. The copycat ninja is either a very good actor or merely forgotten about his original mission. It is apparent to me of which. QB grinned with a blink, and his tail twitched in the direction of the door. Now now, calm both of you. I will not have you degrade your subordinates, no matter how useless they sometimes seem to be, soon it chuckled teasingly. Now then, I'm sure you both know of the Chunin exam coming up. While it's safe to say that you'll make it to the final round and earn Chunin anyway, I'd like to reward you the la now, for all of your hard work in bringing back Uchi. No, don't promote me for that, old hag, Naruto interrupted. All I did was carry Sasuke back. The Inoshika Cho and Kiba took him out, I just got him to him. If anything, award him the la. I'll earn my way to the top fair and square. Godime smiled softly and nodded in understanding. Fine then, depending on their success in the exam, I'll see to their promotion. But back to the mission. With the council suspicious now, our evidence would be more believable, but it would be better to have more. For a more rock-solid case of course. But you have to get it before the Chunin exam. Sasuke will no doubt win back over the public by the end of it and I can't guarantee he won't make Chunin. We'll be back to square one if he does. Naruto nodded along with QB, who seemed distracted. A spy listens in. The copycat ninja. He suspects I sense him and changes position. Watch thine words, Kittling. Naruto mentally nodded. Good then. You're dismissed. Naruto sighed along with QB as he spotted his so-called team at the bridge. Sasuke seemed to be a brooding more than he remembered and the mood seemed to catch on Sakura, as she was quieter than usual. This was the first time the vessel had seen his teammates since the attack a month ago, as they had either been finding MIA ninja, rebuilding or under careful watch, in Sasuke's case. And what a happy reunion it was, as they all took their territory on the bridge and passed the time in silent brooding, Sasuke, pouting, Sakura, or cloud gazing, Naruto. Their wait was a little shorter than usual however, as Kakashi puffed into existence in the middle of the bridge. Seeing his team's rather somber mood, his single eye curled up happily, wrinkling a few hardly seen crow's feet at the edges. Ma, Ma, don't be so down, team. Our first day back and we've got a D-rank mission. This calls for celebration. Without further ado, he handed each of them a slip of paper, or in Naruto's case too. These, copycat Kakashi drawled out, are your entry forms for the Chunin exams. Sasuke's eyes flickered dangerously and Sakura looked doubtful. Naruto merely shrugged at the piece of paper. Fill those out and enter at your own choice. You'll have to fill out a side form for Tenko, Naruto. The vessel merely rose a brow at Kakashi's short pause at Kyuubi's false name. Ah, so he had been spying on him after all. Or he could just be smart and figured it out. Kyuubi was silent at this but gave a disbelieving glance at his jailer. Yeah you're right, definitely spying. Remember, continued Kakashi, only enter if you feel you're ready. Don't let your teammates' opinions persuade or dissuade you. With that, the copy nin vanished in a puff of smoke. 
Shrugging, Sasuke stuffed the slip of paper into his pocket and made his way home. Sakura paused, glancing at the piece of paper to Sasuke and back again, before more hesitantly storing away her entry form. With a cry, she ran after her beloved, not sparing Naruto and Kyuubi a second glance. The vessel, however, stood still in the clearing patiently reading the entry form over. Kyuubi, on his shoulder, perked, his ears drawn forward. Before he could even warn his jailer, Naruto spoke up. You can come out now. I know you're there. A few leaves in a nearby tree rustled in surprise, then diligently stilled again. Come on now, the demon spit doesn't miss things as trivial as spies. The leaves, defeated, parted to let a tall Chunin fall to the ground, landing crouched on his feet. He rubbed the horizontal scar across his face nervously. However, it looked awkward, as a frown set on his features, it would have looked rather charming if he had smiled. Naruto finally looked up, carefully folding the entry form and sliding it into his pocket. QB scrunched up his nose. Ah, one of the smiling villains. My nose did not quite recognize him. I give thee permission to throw thine self at this Chunin, now. Surely thou shalt exterminate him by lifting a finger. The vessel merely grinned every so slightly. Aruka-san, is it? I thought I remembered you. The man, Aruka, looked even more awkward as if it was possible. You remembered me. Naruto offered a foxish smile, his eyes squinting to slits. I remember everyone who looked at me with cold eyes. The vessel's smile was unfaltering but a tense silence stretched over the air. Aruka found it hard to breath. This demon, he still held a grudge. Would he K him now that they were alone? Would he devour him alive, slowly taking each appendage and organ one by one? Would he? Dot dot dot. Walk away. Aruka blinked as Naruto merely turned on heel and began to tread away, a bounce in his step. The Chunin blinked again. W wait. The vessel paused, looking over his shoulder. On the other, Kyuubi stretched upward, looking over the mass of spikes that was Naruto's hair. D do you wanna go get some ramen? Aruka inwardly screamed. Why oh why had he asked the demon for lunch? If he wasn't eaten by the demon, then the village would surely shun him for mingling with evil beings. Naruto stared at him for a moment, through slitted eyes, before they slowly opened. His face stretched into a real smile, blue eyes bright. Sure, the slow walk to Ichiraku's was filled with a long silence, broken up now and again with short bits of conversation. While Naruto was rather passive and calm, poor Aruka looked rather frayed and nervous in the beginning. But as time went on, he slowly began to relax in the vessel's presence and they were soon talking comfortably like reunited friends. This is the place, the Chunin said as he held back the short curtains for Naruto to enter the stands. It was unnecessary however, as the poor vessel was so short he could have walked under them without his large mass of hair even rustling the fabric. With economy so bad right now, I've kinda been the one keeping this place open. Aruka rubbed his scar with an embarrassed smile. Naruto grinned as he sat on a stool at the bar-like restaurant. Aruka made his place beside him. The chef was nowhere in sight, most likely in the back of the kitchen. Hey, Ichiraku-san. The chef, Ichiraku, appeared from the back with a smile. Our Aruka, was expecting you sometime soon. And look at this. You brought someone along. The old man smiled in a grandpa-ish-like way. What will you two be having? A pork and, with a glance at Naruto, who pointed to the menu, he continued, Miso ramen, please. Old man Ichiraku nodded and retreated into the back of the kitchen. The two proceeded in silence again, looking every which way but to each other. So, Naruto finally said, as QB hoped off his shoulder and onto the counter to sniff at the various scents of ramen. Anari Zushi smells better. Food of the gods, it is, QB idly interrupted. The vessel ignored him. You've been following me for a week now. Aruka, caught by surprise, sputted over the glass of water he had been drinking. Why? Naruto continued. Aruka paused, now composed, and set down the glass. I heard a rumor, began the Chunin. That the D. You were back in the village a few days before the attack. Naruto sat listening quietly, his expression blank. I was nervous by I. Well I'm sure you know why. Then I'd heard after the attack you served at the wall. Aruka paused, thinking carefully, then continued. Everyone knows about the two giant swords on the battlefield. The council decided to carve the names of the departed into them, like a new memorial stone. 
The vessel seemed silently amused by this, his blank expression curving upward into a veiled grin. Not only was it ironic the council would honor the demon vessel so, but that the giant swords had begun as mere cheapo knives. They had almost had the value and durability as kitchen knives before he and Kubi had used that jutsu. No one in Kanoa has ever heard of a summon that uses swords like but the boss of frogs summons, only Jiraiya-sama can summon frogs, but as far as Kanoa knows, he's never coming back. This piqued Naruto's interest, but he stayed quiet. I could only think of one person Stro, that's been outside Kanoa long enough to learn a jutsu or a summon like that that was in that area. Naruto momentarily interrupted. Aruka-san, I have know about the Kitsune Baka, a meaningful glance elsewhere eh? so you don't have to keep dodging around it. Aruka blinked at this, rubbing his scar. Why yes, the Chunin stuttered. You did Kanoa a huge favor, fighting like that. But you began spying on me since I was so powerful, Naruto interrupted the short pause once again. He came to a halt and accepted the large bowl of miso ramen served to him. You didn't know if the demon vessel, no matter how good the deed he did, would turn on Kanoa and destroy it, he continued as he took a slurp of noodles. QB, drawn back by the sweet scent of ramen, trotted forward across the table and crouched in front of the bowl, lapping up the broth. Aruka looked away, rubbing the back of his head in an ashamed way. Why? Yes. QB paused in his lapping, ears perked, and looked to the Chunin with a frown on his fox face. Naruto, however, continued eating before pausing to speak. Thou callest me a dog before thou hast just cause, the vessel recited, before looking up to Aruka with a smile. Trust doesn't come on a whim. It has to be built. The Chunin blinked at him, then offered his own smile. Gara of the sand was very restless. Shukaku was practically throwing himself against his bonds as he cried out about some kitsune nearby. It was giving our poor sand in a splitting headache. So grudgingly he gave in to the demon's will for the moment, following his directions through the village toward this, Kistun. It became apparent which one in the crowd was the so-called Kitsune, as a vibrant red fox rode on the shoulder of an even brighter blonde-haired boy. The fox's ears perked, and it looked back at Gara, who stood there silently glaring as he always did. The blonde looked back along with the fox, and began walking again, but this time toward a more secluded part of the city. Gara followed at Shukaku's order. Finally finding a secluded spot, the blonde turned back to confront the other vessel. Tanuki-san, Naruto said with a vulpine grin. Kitsune, Gara replied. Ichibi no Shukaku. Naruto blinked, looking to Kyubi as he hopped off his shoulder. Gara frowned and winced, clutching at the tattoo on his forehead. Kyubi no Kitsune, Gara replied unpassionately. Naruto blinked away from the redhead and looked to Kyubi. You know each other, he asked mentally. Unfortunately, it is so. He has held a grudge ever since I won out in a contest of demonic skills. QB mentally scoffed. I had merely three tails at my back then, and the lowly Tanuki still can't beat mine awesome strength. So you're the vessel of Shukaku, Naruto finally said in a curious way. Gara nodded. Tanuki and Kitsune are not necessarily enemies. I won't K you, but if you get in my way, I'll feed you to my sand. Naruto seemed content with this and nodded, but QB thought otherwise. Bring out thine demon, Tanuki. I will speak with him. Gara frowned at the small fox demon, but, after much mental debate, created a small, lifeless tanuki out of sand, which quickly came to life with a glass-shattering screech. Mine august self, mine power hast swelled and this time I shall defeat thee. Shukaku lunged forward, but was knocked back by Kyubi's tail. Oh, beware, mine lord of jealousy, for I hide not the lowly kitsune thou fought all those hundreds of years ago. Now, I hide thee the K-Y-U-U-B-I no Kitsune. Shukaku growled lowly, but looked away in submission at his superior. Come, Shukaku, we have much to speak of. The two paced away, shoulder to shoulder, and Gara looked doubtful leaving such an insane demon all alone, until the never deep pressure to K slowly eased from his mind. He seemed astonished, raising his hand to make sure he was still himself by twisting his ever-present sand through the air. The two demons began to walk back, Shukaku looking a little shaken. It would never be known what exactly the demonic fox said to his tanuki cousin, but if it was enough to scare the bee-thirsty, rugged Shukaku, it had to be something vicious, or just insanely sweet blackmail. Kyubi looked to Gara. The demon in thee hast quieted, Kyubi told him, 
chuckling at his ironic comment. He hast agreed not to pester thee and let thee sleep. If thou lets him from his cage occasionally, the seal gives him much pain, see. Gara nodded, bewildered. Despite this, his well-trained face only let his eyes widen the lightest bit. And remember, Shukaku, break this deal, and I shall hunt thee down, apprentice with me, even if it means running to the ends of the earth. Not to mention tellest all demon we come across of thine secret. Shukaku whimpered. Naruto let out an extremely long and exasperated sigh. It was going to be a long Chunin exam, he knew. Already, before the first part of the exam had even started, Sasuke had made a spectacle of how they shouldn't draw attention to themselves. Dot. Efficiently drawing attention of everyone on the street as they made their way to the site. And now, here they stood proudly, or at least Sasuke and Sakura did, as Naruto and Kyuubi stood back and rolled their eyes, declaring that the hidden Chunin should drop the Genjutsu so they could get to the test. Sakura, surprisingly, had seen through the Genjutsu first, but kept quiet at Sasuke's earlier orders. However, the traitor had turned hypocrite and called out the Genjutsu. Kyuubi seemed as displeased with the traitor as Naruto was. So that put them where they were now, in that huge room filled with desks and unfamiliar ninja, next to Hanata and hardly 15 seconds into the first test. With a silent seal, and even more silent, Kuchio's no jutsu, and Naruto was on his way. Contrary to the common summoning, there was no loud pop and a summon running out to attack. To the eye, there was the smallest shimmer in the corner of the room, making the Chunin examiners look about for a moment, a few even went as far to utter a quiet, Kai, but none could quite figure out what the shimmer was, or who the odd chakra source floating around the room was from, so it was soon forgotten OT ignored. Those with the Byakugan, however, were in for an odd surprise as they activated their bloodline and looked about for answers. That little shimmer in the air turned to a slender light fox, silently padding along the room and looking over people's shoulders for the answers to their tests. While it was still blue and shimmering with chakra, it looked intangible and near see-through, like a ghost, the effect was only greatened with the fox's natural grace and with its light steps, it seemed to float across the floor. Naruto looked to it as it signaled answers to the vessel. Hanata, still set to keep from cheating, noticed nothing, but another Huga, her cousin Naruto had learned not long ago, uttered a surprised, barely audible, gasp at the sight. Ignoring this, Naruto quickly scribbled down the answers on his sheet, looked up and nodded to the fox. He smiled a foxish grin and the fox returned it with a bow. An invisible wind fluttered up and the fox seemed to blow away with it, dispelling itself. Toward the back of the room, Hugo Neji pondered over the sight. Kyuubi, followed closely by Naruto, snarled deeply at the giant snake sat hissing before them. No fox, of any kind, liked snakes. Kitsune Cage Bunch and No Jutsu, the clearing burst full of smoke, and as it cleared, was filled with an army of foxes. Transforming to match, the vessel retreated for the moment to come up with its strategy. He needed to be quick, being separated from his team, no matter how useless, he thought with a snort, for any length of time was not a good thing. The snake, meanwhile began striking at the Bunchens. For something so large, it was quick. Kuchio's no jutsu, he murmured, having come up with a plan. Kitsune Bunchens, however strong, were too weak to stand against the snake, and though his Kitsune claw was formidable against a ninja, without the gloves he had used to enhance it at the battle, it was useless against large prey. And he just so happened to leave the gloves at home. Just peachy indeed, as QB, across the clearing, began to mentally whip him for doing something so foolish. So used to it, Naruto hardly noticed the air shimmer and turned to ghostly foxes, for his eyes anyway. It would have been a rather useless summon if the summoner couldn't see what they were summoning, as he preformed the summoning. The spirits, three of them and each different in looks and color, doved down to the battle bellow. Each picked a preferred Kitsune Bunshin and dove into it and, like a spirit possessing a body, disappeared. The Kitsune Bunshin shimmered with the summons' respective chakra before it engulfed them to form a body around them, looking once again like the summon. The possessed Bunshin looked back to Naruto with a nod, and leapt forward to mercilessly attack the snake with their own style. The remaining Kitsune Bunshin dispelled and Naruto transformed to normal once again, the odd summons would be more than enough to take down one snake. You can come out now, Hugo Neji, it's quite safe, Naruto called out impatiently to the trees as his summons made short work of the enemy. The vessel was getting quite annoyed with being spied on by now. There was a pause, 
but, decided now, Hugo Neji leapt down from his treetop hiding place to face the vessel. You're alone, Naruto stated, it's probably not very safe to wander about alone in a forest named after deaths. The same goes for you, Uzumaki, Neji retorted. His intimidating eyes, as he had his Byakugan activated, wandered away from Naruto, past him, to the odd summons as they just finished off the snake. What type of summons are those? No one in Kanoa summons anything close to that. Fox spirits, the vessel replied innocently enough. Neji's eyes narrowed, veins wrinkling around them. Not all summons have their own B, ya no. These guys just need to find their own. Temporarily anyway. To prove his point, the summons, the job done as they stood over a rather D-snake, whisked away until all that was left were a few confused-looking kitsune bunshins who were dispelled shortly after. Why are they not visible? The Hyuga pressed on. Most summons are have their body, their chakra, and the summoner's chakra keeping it here. These summons just have chakra and spirit Why? Stuff. Naruto waved a hand in dismissal, not all too worried he didn't quite understand it fully either. Normal people can't see spirit Y stuff or chakra. Though I guess people can sense the chakra, the vessel pondered on, much to the growing annoyance of Neji. Anyway since you have a Byakugan I guess you're just seeing the summons chakra. Neji frowned, his Byakugan deactivated. So you're tampering with spirits. How? Rebellious of you. The vessel didn't comment as QB curled around his feet, a scroll in mouth. End this quickly, interrupted QB. By the pricking of mind thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Naruto looked down at the fox demon, appalled. Single quote dot dot dot. You don't have any thumbs, QB. The fox demon startled, looking up at his jailer in an embarrassed manner. Tis but a saying, kittling. But something evil does come, thou needs to return to thine team. Naruto merely snorted. Neji looked on in an interested way at the silent conversation, the vessel's expressions only giving of a clue they were talking. Yeah, well, that's just my style, the vessel said finally said to the Hyuga, picking up Kyuubi in his hands. He was growing bored with the Hyuga's interrogation. Anyway, I gotta get back to my team, still got a few more snakes to fry. Good luck with the exams. Naruto waved lazily over his shoulder as he waved, but stopped and looked back after a moment, as if forgetting something. Oh yeah, and Neji. Said Hugo blinked in question. Thanks for the scroll. Neji blinked, then started for a moment, looking to his belt for the exam scroll he had worked so hard to gain, to find it gone. He looked back up, fully intending to K the vessel, regardless of his rather intimidating tampering with spirits. But, looking about, he was even more surprised to find Naruto as gone as his scroll. Naruto frowned as he looked down at his team below him. They seemed to be confronting an odd grass nin. Or at least, Sasuke was. Sakura kneeled at Sasuke's feet, clearly in a catatonic state from the sheer amount of K intent the grass nin was projecting. Sasuke remained unfazed, however, as the K intent was clearly not for him. The vessel quietly pulled out a scroll, and preformed his all too useful recording jutsu, and pocketed the scroll once again. Just in time, at Sasuke's word, the grass nin's neck extended, and his head shot forward, mouth clamping on the last Uchiha's neck. Without wasting a moment, the vessel chucked a wooden kunai at its neck. The grass nin's head retracted back to its thankfully rightful place before it could hit though. Sasuke staggered, clutching at the bite, with a groan. The Uchiha fell to his knees in pain. SAAA, the snakeish man drawled slowly, it seems we have a fox in our mist. Naruto didn't comment jumping down from his perch to land between his teammates. Kyuubi joined him immediately, landing in front of them all. The snake placed a seal, Kyuubi informed his jailer. We've caught it early though, tis not nearly finished and fades already. The vessel looked to Sasuke, while the Uchiha squirmed in pain on the tree branch, and Naruto had the odd urge to help him, traitor or not, but his intuition told him the Uchiha was beyond help. He glanced to Sakura, only to find her unconscious. Snake, called QB. Thou art a snake, my nose wretches with the stench of it. The fox demon's nose quivered for a moment as the grass nin stood watching in an amused way. Yes, thou art Orokimaru. Naruto frowned, while the grass nin, Orokimaru, grinned evilly. You have quite the pet there, Naruto kun, Orokimaru commented idly, his grin seemed to widen beyond the outline of his face, it was so wide. Naruto growled. 
It must have been quite the job to tame him. Why are you here, snake? The vessel burst out, rather impatient. For Sasuke, Naruto snarled, with the Uchiha's traitorous ways, he would no doubt go with the snake Sanon without a fight. On the contrary, Naruto-kun, Orokimaru corrected, like a slow hiss. Sasuke-kun came to me. The vessel blinked at this. Come now, Naruto-kun, you're more clever than that. You figured out Sasuke-kun was helping that silly king of the white so easily. Naruto's eyes widened. That missing nin organization, supporting king of the whites, was Orokimaru. That would explain why Sasuke had been so ready to send him a message. Then something dawned on the vessel, making his eyes widen even more and filter red with anger. The same organization that supported King of the Whites, Orokimaru, were the ones that attacked Kanoa. A. You attacked Kanoa, roared the vessel, as QB bristled with a snarl. Just because we F your supporter. Actually, the snake Sanon interrupted with a chuckle, we attacked for him. He gestured to Sasuke lazily. He wanted me to take him from the village, it's only my duty to try. His sinister grin slowly turned to a frown. Unfortunately, Kanoa has grown stronger in my absence. Stronger than a few thousand samurai, at least. Naruto roared with furry, Kyuubi's chakra flaring around him, and leapt forward. Kitsune claw. He lashed his clawed hand forward as it trailed with chakra and the blow landed, leaving the snake Sanon with five long W. Though the technique was weak without the gloves, it was not completely useless. The vessel was surprised enough to halt, however, as a hand burst through Orokimaru's mouth. And like a snake shedding its skin, a new, fully intact, Orokimaru crawled out of the torn-up body. You amuse me Naruto-kun, the snake Sanon said, grinning his evil grin. But I have no time for this. Sasuke-kun has the power to come to me now, please tell him that for me. Bellowing, the vessel leapt forward once again, but the snake Sanon stepped back to meld into the tree bark behind him, and disappear. The vessel snarled, before letting loose a furious howl, and s his claws at the tree. While he didn't use any specialized technique, his already formidable nails left deep scars in the wood. Calm, kittling, he has failed to notice his seal is naught. The vessel growled plopping down on the branch in a cross-legged position. His shoulders hunched and, though his head was down, his eyes looked up to the unconscious body of Sasuke. It was a rather intimidating pose, the vessel sitting there his hands stained with B and his eyes even redder. Why do I follow him? I wonder, sometimes, if Kanoa deserves all this s when they're not even thankful for it. Thou follows him to serve thine turn upon him. QB padded up to sit beside the disgruntled vessel. Thou promised to help this village, unthankful or not, even if thou needest to drag each member from their homes, kicking and wailing. QB chuckled in a foxish manner. Though thou did not needest to do quite that, this is thine way of helping the village. Naruto was silent. As much as he was beginning to hate it, he needed to let the Uchiha and Snake Sanon do all of these horrible actions, so he could properly unmask him. Out the traitor too early, and he would get away from it, and no doubt be the end of Kanoa. The vessel sighed and stood, whipping his bee hands on his white pants without hesitation. Asshole, he murmured to the unconscious Uchiha. Don't worry, jerk, you'll get what's coming to ya. Calm now, and feeling better, Naruto looked to Kyuubi. I can't carry both of them all the way to the tower. Understanding the simple sentence, the fox demon nodded. The air around them throbbed for a moment, as if a powerful illusion was being dispelled, and the small form of Kyuubi disappeared and grew to nearly the size of a horse. The fox demon, larger now, certainly looked more impressive compared to the little thing he was moments ago. Naruto grinned, it had been a long time since he had seen Kyuubi's foe body's true form. Working quickly, he lifted Sasuke and Sakura to Kyuubi's back and tied them on securely with some handy wire from Sasuke's supplies pouch, Kyuubi couldn't help but chuckle at that. Finished and Raran to go, the fox demon and vessel leapt forward through the trees, toward the tower. Along the path there were many hazards, such as giant poisonous bugs and other shinobi, but thanks to the duo's keen senses, they steered clear of danger and made it to the tower in record time. Good to see you, Aruka-san, Naruto said with a foxish grin. Aruka smiled, the smoke around him dissipating, as he had just been summoned. Where are you teammates, Naruto? The Chunin asked after a moment. He soon spotted them, however, asleep on the ground, back to back. S-A-A-A. 
We ran into a bit of trouble in the forest, so we're a little tired, said the vessel, rubbing the back of his head. His posture turned serious, however. It seems that Orokimaru has infiltrated the Chunin exams and gave Sasuke a bit of a gift. Could you relay that to Godime? Aruka blinked, wide-eyed. He had heard of Orokimaru and none of it was good. This was definitely a dangerous situation. I will, thank you for the information Naruto, Aruka said, and with Naruto's dismissing nod, disappeared in a puff of smoke. Naruto relaxed as the Chunin disappeared. Aruka obviously hadn't been observant enough to spot that QB was missing. With a quiet, Kai, the minor illusion keeping the giant fox hidden was dispelled. QB padded up, looking slightly embarrassed with the predicament. While his borrowed body was useful, it didn't have the power to do something as complicated as the illusion that disguised him as the tiny fox everyone thought he was. Naruto sighed, and began preforming the long line of seals needed to disguise QB once again. Damn. Uchiha had it coming to him. Naruto despised Genjutsu. Clang. Kunai blocked Kunai. Skid. A body thrown back and, by the sound of it, skidding on its feet. A pause in array of sounds, broken only the frantic panting of two different sets of lungs. Pat. Pat pat pat. A slight step forward, followed quickly by frantic running. The swish of clothes, as the runner leapt high into the air. The twang. Of wire as it was unraveled from its spool. Naruto took this time to open his eyes, slitted pupils dilating from the change of light, and looked down on the fight below the balcony he stood upon. Sakura flew through the air, legs gracefully tucked under her and her long pink hair whipping in a furry behind her. She spun her ninja wire about, before hurling it forward, moving quick enough to wrap around and bind the frozen Eno. The mind nin struggled to loosen her hands, just enough to work them into the familiar seals, but the wire held fast. Then. Oh then, with a malicious grin as she fell back to earth, Sakura yanked on the cord sharply. Eno's eyes widened in surprise as sprays of bee splattered across the ground. The bipolar girl let the bee soak in wire slacken and Eno, eyes wide with surprise beginning to glaze over, fell to the ground, a growing pool of red around her. Immediately, the ref raised his hand and declared Sakura the winner as Medic Nin raced onto the battlefield. Naruto let out a low growl, his eyes flashing red only for a moment. QB, however, perched on the railing before his jailer, near flat out roared. The rest of the rookie nine, as Naruto was glad to see they made it to the semi-finals of the Chunin exam, had similar reactions, protesting at how a ninja of the leaf could do such an action against their fellow comrade, understandably, it seemed as though Chuji was protesting loudest. Shikamaru went into a silent, yet calculated, rage, griping the railing before him until his knuckles would be white for hours. It was all too appalling for the Kanoa Nin to bear. Sakura, however, stood proudly through it all, ignoring the protests of her now not so fellow comrades. That's what you get for calling Sasuke Kun a traitor, she said arrogantly to the D looking Eno. She turned proudly, long hair fanning out behind her, and treaded back up to the balcony to Sasuke. The Uchiha looked a little too pleased for his own good. Lucky for Eno, though, the medics arrived and though her W was serious, they were healable, so she was rushed off to the hospital. It had been an odd preliminaries, supposed D-lasts were making headway and supposed rookie of the years were being beaten down. As such had happened in the battle between Hanata and her fate-driven cousin, Hugo Neji. It seems after her mission with Naruto, she could finally use her skills well in battle and easily tied with her cousin. Even Akamai Kichuji and Inazuka Kiba had tied. No one quite knew how that had happened. Many believed Chuji had been bribed with stake, but it wasn't clearly known. Soon tempers were suppressed and the arena was cleaned, so Naruto prepped for his upcoming battle. He was last to go, so he didn't have to look up at the board flashing, Uzumaki Naruto vs. Rock Lee, to know who he was fighting. Be careful, Naruto, Kakashi drawled out lazily as Naruto removed his weights, as he was sure he would need to. His ears just ached at the sound of this Lee kid's weight scraping together. Lee's known for his taijutsu, you and Tenko might be outmatched. The vessel grinned up at his, sensei. Don't worry, old man, Kakashi twitched irritably, he's not the only one fast on his feet. With this, the vessel jumped from the balcony to the arena, shortly followed by Kyuubi. He waited for a moment, then, growing irritated, looked up to the balcony for his opponent. To find him crying with his sensei. 
Dear Inari, was his opponent that scared of him. No. As he watched, he slowly became more and more distraught. Oh Lee. Guy. Of course. Oh Guy. Lee replying. Oh Inari. And QB dying. He spoke it low enough that no one heard, of course. Except for the sharp ears of an attentive dog Nin. Finally, Lee made his appearance in front of Naruto, ready to begin the battle. Are you ready, friend, to behold my youthful passion of hard work? The green monstrosity cried. Naruto blinked. I've heard people call you a genius. A dropout will beat a genius through hard work and their springtime of youth. For a moment, Naruto and Kyuubi just stood there, blinking, before Naruto let out a snort. Genius. Im no genius. Shortly before Kyuubi burst out laughing, the assembled nin stood stunned, looking down at the small fox emitting such a deep and powerful voice. Well all except for Kiba, whom pointed and cried at the top of his considerable lungs, I knew it. Naruto looked down at the fox demon and frowned. See now, look what you did, Kitsune Barker. You blew our cover. Mine apologies Kittling, Kyuubi chuckled at everyone's stunned expression as he hopped to Naruto's shoulder. I cannot contain mine laughter at this child's misinformation. Tis gut-wrenching. Don't mock my nindo. I will protect my way of the ninja. Lee fell into a taijutsu position, a ridged straight hand poised forward as if it would steer him to his target, and rushed forward with a flurry of kicks. With his weights removed, the vessel was just barely faster than the green monstrosity. But of course, Lee had yet to take off his own weights. If he did, Naruto would be extremely hard-pressed to keep up. Kitsune Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. An army of foxes ran forward toward Lee, skipping and dodging each way. Lee, of course, dodged left right up down, every way possible, to make his way to Naruto. But just as he came into range for a powerful kick, the vessel jumped back and made a seal. At the same time, Lee's round eyes went wide as he spotted the Kitsune Bunshin on his shoulder, and felt a few more gripping the jumpsuit on his back. Bunshin Daibakua, barked Kyuubi. Naruto jumped back again, carefully out of range. Boom. Finished Naruto. Immediately the clones erupt and Lee goes flying, hitting the wall in a burst of dust. Listen well child, some are born great, some achieve greatness and some have greatness thrust upon them, Kyuubi called out as Lee climbed to his feet dusting himself off. And believe mine argument, this. Human, Naruto snorted at this, is no genius. Lee looked on expressionless, before giving a good guy pose, teeth blinging and all. Then if both of us are hard workers, let us compete and see whose springtime of youth burns brightest. Lee bent down, pulling his leg warmers down and reaching for his weights. Naruto flinched and rushed forward, punching Lee back before he could remove the weights. Sorry, Lee-san, the vessel said, standing tall before the green beast as he performed a single tiger seal. Kyuubi hopped off his shoulder for the first time in the battle, chakra whipping from his body as his jailer charged him with it. Immediately, Lee hopped up and dashed away, darting about the arena as fast as he could with his several hundred pound ways bearing him down. Unexpectedly, he took the offensive and preformed Kanoa Senpu. To Naruto's head. Ouch. Damn. He drawled, the gap from the missing tooth visible almost at the back of his mouth. That'll take a while to regrow. He looked up at Kyuubi, who was laughing at his jailer, sitting on Lee's chest, long tails wrapped round him. The green beast was merely blinking up at the tiny fox. Yosh, I guess you got me Naruto-san, Lee called out with, despite the situation, all cheerfulness. I forfeit. With the last battle over, the winners of the preliminary matches lined up to receive their instructions. Naruto, being at the end, looked down the line at his compeers. Next to him, on his left, stood Gara, arms crossed and expressionless. Next stood Temari, his sister, leaning on her giant fan, and Kankuro on her other side, leaning back with hands in pockets. Shikamaru, left of Kankuro, looked just as bored, while Sakura, next to Sasuke looked on, innocently. And finally, Shino stood impassively all the way at the other end of the line. GHT well, since you're representing your village, concluded Sunad. Slowly, each member of the line stepped forward and plunged their arm into the, the box to withdraw a slip of paper. Soon, the examiners had each finalist's name written down and began to announce who would fight who. First match, Uchiha Sasuke vs. Kankuro of the Sand. Sakura let out a little squeal of how Sasuke would be victorious.
Everyone looked at her as if she was insane, she had nearly just K her comrade not long ago. Second match, Uzumaki Naruto vs. Gara of the Sand. Both demon vessels looked to each other and nodded respectfully. Third match, Abarain Shino vs. Nara Shikamaru. Both Kano and Nin looked to each other and merely shrugged, content with their opponate. Fourth match, Temari of the Sand vs. Haruno Sakura. Sakura let out a forceful, Shanaro, while Temari looked on, displeased with being paired to fight such a thing. You all have a month to train, use it well. With that, the examiners and Sunid puffed away, leaving the finalists to their own devices. Hurry up QB, we're gonna be late. Naruto thought to his companion as he ran forward. QB, temporary stopping in front of a restaurant at the sweet smell of Inari Zushi, darted forward once again to jump up and cling to his jailer's traveling cloak. The vessel had been lucky when Godaim had allowed him to leave the village for the month to train. With the attack from Orokimaru, traveling in and out of the village had been drawn to a minimum. But had been all the help and the vessel felt as if he was forever surging with chakra. They arrived at the arena quickly and Naruto took the moment to pull his handy gloves from his pocket and put them on. Immediately they melded to the long talons the vessel was familiar with and he grinned with pleasure. This was going to be a fun tournament. The vessel rushed forward once again, finding his way into the waiting room for compeers. The leaf nins looked up, blinking from their own pondering, and provided Naruto with a grin or a smile. It seemed he was becoming a figurehead of loyalty and determination for the rookies, despite his oddly talking fox. The vessel foxishly grinned back, showing that his tooth had indeed grown back. Oh, it seems he was late. Late enough to watch Sasuke Shishi Renden Kankuro into the ground and win the match. Peachy. Both demon vessels were called out next and Naruto looked to Gara, who nodded, obviously unfazed by his brother loosing. But both knew they had to keep up this ruse, to keep Kanoa under cover. Shortly after the second exam, coincidentally when Naruto was requesting his training leave, the three siblings had reported to Godaim of Orokimaru's upcoming attack. With their knowledge, Kanoa had been able to prepare without looking. Well, prepared. While the same guards guarded the wall, they were strategically placed at where the wall would be hit the hardest. To back them up, all available ninja, excluding participants in the Chunin exam and their teammates, had been gathered and hidden near the wall, ready to spring to action when the first wave appeared. It was all a matter of time. Apparently a very long time, as Gara wasn't going to give the signal to attack any time soon. And now they stood before each other in the arena, citizens of Kanoa, oblivious to the oncoming attack, looking down at them. You ready, cousin Tanuki? Gara provided the smallest smirk. Of course, Fox spit. Naruto smiled foxishly. The referee looked on, unnerved, before he called out a definite, begin. Contrary to his usual tactics of crossing his arms and waiting for his opponent to dish it out, Gara stood ready, his sand swirling in the air. He was facing a kitsune, be it field fox to Inari's messenger, he didn't know, but a tanuki knew better than to relax around a trickster fox. Naruto, however, quickly retreated, darting into the small group of trees scattered about the arena. The tanuki vessel followed slowly, his feet making soft pats as he walked. His ringed eyes glared at each tree doubtfully, he couldn't sense the other vessel anywhere. Ah, there, his sand darted out, shooting forward like a spear, at a short tree with yellowed leaves. It was too early in the season for leaves to be yellowing, even desert-dwelling ninja knew that. The tree puffed away and reviled a startled Naruto through the smoke, be splattered on the trees and mixed with the sand. Old habits come back to the Tanuki vessel, making him grin sinisterly with pleasure. It was about then when QB burst through the canopy above them and lunged downward at Gara. Without even looking, the sand surged forward, creating a tangible wall for the fox demon to run into. It gave enough time for Naruto surge the W with QB's chakra to heal it quickly and reach up and grab a handful of leaves. He chose a vibrant green one, holding it delicately with his taloned hands. Sharpen, he muttered as he waved his free hand over it, surging chakra into the small thing. It grew to the size of a knife, glowing with chakra, and he held it like one, the stem like a handle and the actual leaf the blade. Naruto rushed forward, poising the leaf made knife for attack. Immediately Gara's sand made a wall. It disappeared, but he was not disappointed as it came s across his sand once again. The wall dispelled, Gara stumbled back in attempt to dodge, 
but long years of relying on the sand to protect him made him slow to react. The tip of the knife managed to put a scar in the strap holding his gourd, but nothing else. Unfortunately for him, Naruto followed through with the attack, agile and quick, with his other taloned hand, poised to strike. More sand surged forward to block him, but the sharp claws pierced through the defense. His gourd fell to the ground with a tremendous boom and a billow of dust, apparently the gourd was quite heavy, everyone thought, slightly appalled. Unfazed and glaring, Gara merely hefted the large thing onto his shoulder with the broken strap and holding it there. It'd be a cold day in hell before he left it behind. Taking the offensive, his sand shot forward to Naruto and Kyuubi, whom now clutched his shoulder, like a menacing hand. They both jumped back. Yusa Bakaryu, the Tanuki vessel muttered, his sand gathering to make a monstrous little wave before Naruto. It advanced, plunging down at the other vessel, before he waved and disappeared in a puff of smoke and was replaced with a small fox, grinning mischievously. Gara glared, Katsune Bunshin in a henge or Kawarimi, he didn't know but didn't care. The sand wave came down on top of the Kitsune Bunshin, dispelling it in a puff of smoke. Gara looked about, glaring his ringed glare, as he was surrounded by Kitsune Bunshin's puffing into existence. Naruto stood across the arena, looking confident. Each Bunshin had a pair of kunai wrapped in their tails, wooden and metal, all of which they promptly threw. It was a sizable amount, but at Naruto's cry of, Shiho Hapo Shuriken, they at least doubled. Gara's sand flew up and took the beating of Kunai. He didn't see the Kitsune Bunshins run toward his defensive wall, but he did hear the cry of Bunshin Daibakua. And the resounding explosion that followed. His sand rocked and struggled to stand ground against it, but stayed firm. On the outside of his defensive sphere, Naruto lunged forward, twisting in the air. The wall was crumbling on the outside, one more good hit was all it took. He twisted, swiping his chakra surge talons. Kitsune Claw. The rings of chakra hurled forward and hit the sand, effectively dispelling it as Naruto rushed forward, blade, poised. The fox vessel appeared behind Gara, sand between the vulnerable spot and, blade, stilled it, but it fought to stay. Gara's sand was slowly wrapping around the other vessel's legs, it already had the hand grasping the blade, slowly crushing bones within. Kyuubi, not one to be left useless, bit down on Gara's leg with sharp teeth. Whether it hurt the Tanuki vessel was left unsaid, as he gave no reaction to it. My blade can slice through your sand, Gara. Naruto panted from behind him. You're done if I decide it. The referee started out of his days of watching the amazing battle to raise his hand. Winner, Uzumaki Naruto. That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.